We're back with the League of the Genuine Conversation. This is a show that is dedicated to a discussion, a conversation about the important but often ignored subject of counterfeits, fake products and services. Uh, with me on the show today is Assistant Superintendent of Police, Brenda Oinebie Basirika. Basirika. She is the head of the enforcement department at the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. She, she wears so many hats. She's an expert in chemical, biological, radiation, and nuclear things. I don't know. You're going to be telling us what this is. But okay. she's a police officer from attached to the anti Terrorism from the anti-counterterrorism anti-counterterrorism mm. department of, of the Uganda Police. Uh, for the show, I can call you Oine or Brenda, it whichever okay. you choose. You're, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, this show, as you can see, for the first time we have. This looks like a supermarket. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not selling uh, these products. These products are actually part of the catch that are found here. Um, has gotten from the market, from the market where uh, you and me are shopping, and these are fake products uh, that she has put on display here to show you the extent uh, of the problem. So this discussion will center around these products uh, so that we are helped uh, to understand how to avoid them, how to identify them, and probably know about the danger. So Uganda registration services bureau yes what does it do in relation to fighting counterfeits yes. uh, ursb as a bureau established the enforcement unit to manage the laws that are administered there and among them is the directorate of uh, ip where intellectual we intellectual property intellectual property mm -hmm. where we administer offenses which are administered by URSP in, in the governing laws that they, they, they administer. Now the unit uh, goes for operations in the field. We impound uh, counterfeit products. And then we also arrest the suspects, especially the people that we find in possession, the people we find manufacturing, even the people that we find importing or in transit with counterfeits. So, so for starters, are you the government body that registers intellectual property, which includes trademarks, uh, patents, copyright, just for clarity? Are you, are you the office? Yes, URSB registers um, under the intellectual property directorate. Mm. They register uh, marks, which are trademarks, patents, Give an example of a trademark for somebody to uh, understand. Like Vim, as a Unilever, as a company, it's Kenyan, but we have, they have a mark, Vim. So this is the trademark? This is, yes, this is the mark, Vim. Mm. The trademark is the certificate, but now we have marks which we protect. So this is protected I, yes, when the, you register? The mark, Vim, is protected by government because it is registered and it's given a certificate which runs for a period of time. So you are not allowed to copy Vim? You're not allowed to copy Vim because it is a registered mark of an individual. And when you copy, then you're counterfeiting VIM. You're counterfeiting VIM and it's an offense under the laws administered at URSP. Okay, so before we get into the meat of this, mm. how, how does a consumer or anybody affected by counterfeit, so if their mark is infringed or a consumer is affected by mm. a fake product, how do they reach URSP? These are individual rights. So whenever you, you discover that someone is uh, infringing on a product that you have registered for or your product, then uh, you come to URSB uh, and register or file in a complaint with the, with the Bureau through the Registrar General. The Registrar General received all complaints that are registered, uh, registered at the Bureau. You go physically, do you have like a contact, telephone contact, maybe you can give us, maybe an email, how do we contact you? Uh, earlier during COVID, there was an email that was used, but lately people come in physically. It, you, then it was URSB services at, at ursb.go.ug, it's what they used to use, but now 
you can bring it physically at the offices on George Street, file it in at the registry, the registrar general receives it, then it downsizes to the enforcement unit under the compliance and enforcement unit. That's when we receive it, and then investigations commence by getting expert opinions from the relevant authorities. We can either get, uh, we have an MOU with uh, UNBS, with URA, and other institutions, Office of, uh, of, uh, of the DPP. So we liaise in case we want expert opinions from all those offices. We liaise and then get that opinion. Immediately we get it and we ascertain that yes, there is infringement. Then we go to the field and do operations on behalf of the, of the Bureau. That is when we go and impound. That's when we go and, uh, and seize and then even arrest. From there we institute criminal proceedings. Because we are police officers, so we do not go in the civil way, but we go criminally, and all these are registered and uh, handled by the standards utilities court at Buganda Road. That's where all That's our cases are, yes, so, so, are taken. So <coughs> does the Uganda police have an anti-counterfeit unit, a specialized unit fighting fakes, or Uganda police only sends its officers to URSB to fight counterfeits? Uganda Police as an institution supports us because now we are we, we, we report to there but we are now housed by URS by URSB just like UNBS has their own now Uganda Police segments officers and then they specialize and work on offenses now URSB we were sent there on secondment to administer the laws that are governed at URSB so we do not have other officers from the other side. Actually, even when you go and report at the station and we discover that it is uh, an offense that URSB is supposed to administer, then we call for those files so that we can put those opinions. Because what our aim is to succeed in court. Our aim is to succeed in court, so we usually call for them and then put evidence which is conclusive enough for court to, to be accepted in court. To, to be you are heading a unit of enforcement at URSB, mm. so you are in the field basically. Yes. Uh, before you tell us about these products here, mm. can you tell us generally what is the state of counterfeit trade mm. in Uganda or in this region? Is it a big problem? Is it a minor issue? It's a very big problem. A very big. It's problem. a very big problem because, as we are in the field, counterfeits range from from foodstuffs. They extend to, to machines, they extend to uh, agricultural products, they extend to even registration, even documents. It extends as far as that. So yes, it is a very big problem in the country. Uh, and, and, and I think I should say that because we handle individual, individual rights, we have, not, we have not expanded to how we would feel it would expand <coughs> if we were given the mandate to execute and thus go in the field and complain on behalf of, 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 of the people. But yes, uh, we are trying it to... It is a very big problem. It's a and very it big is problem. It's a very serious problem. Very serious in problem. Mm. Here you have uh, some of the fast moving consumer goods mm. that uh, you have caught from the market. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can just walk us through some of these products. I can see. This looks like curry powder. Yes, this is curry um, powder. Where did this come from? These were from uh, markets and shops. Markets. Markets, shops, even markets. This, you go to Kalere. This you, was from where? You, this is from Kalere, Nakawa, Kawempe. We got all these from all those markets. It's, I think I have like, we have exhibits of, 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 of a, a full room of curry powder. Oh, this one. So that was yes. like a lorry full. Of curry powder. So just open so that our viewers get to know what curry powder is this and why do you say it is fake? Now this is cocoa. Uh, the packaging. So we can have one sample. It does, yes. The packaging itself. Now the mark. The mark is different from, from the original so mark. The problem is we did not carry the original, but the mark here which was used. So can we open and get one sample inside okay. there? This is curry powder. Curry powder, A popular yes. brand, this one. Yes, meat curry. They call it meat curry when you go to oh, the... Oh, it is in to the, to the Yes, to the population. They call it... And of course, uh, now people, the wanainchi, mostly consume these. 
when they cannot afford the, the grassroots one inch yes. may not afford Royco. Yes. So, so they, they buy this one. They buy this. So this what is the brand name? Uh, they this, ha one? this one they put now now like this fake, it has meat curry. But on top the it's brand a product. is called Kako. 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 Who manufacture? Who is supposed but to now like you're seeing the cube. They some of them have meat curry, just meat curry. And then some of them they put the name Kako. This is a Ugandan product? It's or? a Ugandan product. This is a Ugandan product. So the trademark is called Kako, the proper one? The mark is Kako, yes. So they will give you uh, meat curry. It's made in uh, so you, this when, is a Kampala product. When you analyze it, you'll find when the mark is different, when the color that has been used is quite different. The experts, we have uh, our experts in intellectual property who usually who give us the mark. opinions. Yes. What about the contents? Uh, even the contents, actually, they are contents that we have when you find containers of mixed things. We don't know if it's color. Sometimes it can even be color. Mixed this and, one you checked, and packaged. This one you checked, what they put inside? What is inside here? There are different, when we checked the ingredients that we have, because we recovered even ingredients in the field, we had, uh, we should, some, of, some of it we call it paint, I should say. So there is paint here. Then some of them tell us we went to Owino and we mixed this and this. And we, we came up with this. Pesticide residues, paint, maybe there's even this. some uh, sand. Very possible, because even the packaging areas, hygienically, are not okay. Most of the time you search, and then even after arresting, you proceed to search at their homes. And you find when that's where production is happening. It's not known, it's not licensed. So, so you, you so have impounded. How far is this case? How far has this mm, case We gone? have, uh, now like for this case, we have over 20 files that this were prosecuting yes we have over for 20 this suspects powder alone yes for that curry powder alone 25 files yes which are ongoing people are picked from all over kampala yes or Uganda. all over we got in kasubi we got in uh, na nakawa we got in kawempe we got in uh, kagoma we got in uh, kalere so who is the culprit who 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 are the culprits selling this are they are they like big wholesalers? Are they small dealers? All. No, that's the other funny thing. Because the problem now with counterfeiting, we stretch from the people who are making the bags, we come to the people who are packaging, and then we even go to the people who are selling. Because you'll find when a company is producing the bags, just the bags, and then you'll go and find when the other person Another has one bought. Is grinding. Another one is, so yes. you're saying that counterfeiting is the whole production and supply chain. Yes. The person who provides the packaging, mm -hmm. the person who manufactures the content, yes. the one who seals, the one who transports, the one who stores until we come to... The one in possession. The law has, has, has been at least liberal for us because when you're in possession, even when you didn't produce, we get you. Most times possession of a counterfeit are, yes, product that is, is an a offense. Crime. It's an offense. So if I'm a consumer and they find me in possession of this fake curry powder, I also have a case to answer. You have a case to answer. Because what we have noticed in the field is whenever they get these products, they know that it's a, it's, it's a fake because they buy them at a cheaper price. Affordability. The prices are quite lower than the original prices. The price of this fake. Of the so fake. this one, this one, you you got. They were selling it at what price compared to the genuine one? Do you do you know the prices? I, I can't figure out the prices, but, but the they are not. The difference is what 10, 20 percent it, difference. It should 50? be about a thirty. Thirty percent. Thirty percent difference from the original product itself. So so this this particular counterfeiter. Uh, is he free? Is he in jail? Or whoever these 25 people are? Where the are they? 25, of these th cases? This is recent. That was This operation happened last month and they're on bond. Their files are almost through because we have sanctioned about five. They're supposed to appear what is the in, in, in court. Uh, manufacture, we have those who, who did manufacture and then they're in possession. Then there are those who are just in possession and sell for commercial. Most of them are for commercial. The, 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 the counts differ. Some have three counts, some have one count. Then some are manufacturing. So they can add up to three counts. Are there any people you caught buying this also? Are there consumers who are affected by this? Or are you only dealing with the traders now? 
Because I'm sure many homes have this carry powder. Many homes have. We have not been able to access homes. But at least now what we are doing is even go to the people who sell on a retail basis. That's why now you're seeing me even in markets to make sure that we get them off the shelves so that these products, if it's paint, how many people, say in Kampala, where we have been, have consumed are this? Paint. Are eating paint, yes. So we are trying as much as possible to make sure that we get them off the market. Off the market. Yes. We need to take a break. Uh, when we return, we shall talk about counterfeit as a security threat in relation to these products and others. We need to take a break. We are back with the second segment of this interesting discussion here with Assistant Superintendent of Police, Oinebie Brenda Basirika. She heads the enforcement unit at the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. Uh, Afande, you, you left off when you are describing um, the lorries and lorries you have of these fakes yes. you got on the market. And my mm -hmm. question was, do you see in your work um, counterfeiting as a security threat? Is it a, such a serious security threat? Yes. When you look it at it at a, a broader uh, perspective, yes, it is a sec security threat. Because uh, we, when you talk of piracy as, as, as part of counterfeiting, the terrorists themselves that being a counterterrorism personnel, the, the, the terrorists that we have gotten deal in businesses. And they are the people How also who do... How are they financed? Do, they have businesses that they run. They do production, they bring in uh, things from, 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 from over the seas and sell to, to our people. So you're saying that counterfeit business could actually be supporting terrorism? It does support terrorism. Counterfeiting does support terrorism. And therefore, counterfeiting can be part of those ingredients of terrorism. So it can also be terrorism, especially if the counterfeit product is dangerous and it is distributed widely and affects many people who get injured or, or die. That could be terrorism also. The law should capture that, really. Because now, like, I have shampoo, hair shampoo. This is a product from, uh, it's not Ugandan. Mm -hmm. But how many people consume this? this that is a shampoo. This is black hair shampoo. It, it massive, it's massively brought into the country. We, we analyze black it. black hair every day. So yes. if I put it in my gray hair, what happens? It becomes black? It will become black, but what are the consequences of, of the black? So what is... This, where, this where is, is where this we, are, we, we are seeing so many cancers coming in. Why is this fake, uh, Brenda? Why it is fake? The Who mark. Who is the owner of this mark? The uh, mark is called what? The mark is Dexay. Dexay. Dexay is the mark, yes. It's the registered mark. So we usually call it Dexay. That is the registered mark. Dexay.com. Dexay is from where? It should be Indian. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you are saying you also got Dexay? Yes, this is Dexay a fake. It's, it's, fake. Not, it's not the original. And this is consumed by almost our saloons. The population of women and even men. Going to saloon. Going I to want saloons. to wash my hair. You don't even ask what shampoo are you using. It's, it's imported. I mean, it's, it's from abroad. So when I go to the saloon, so I should they will also use it, ask... They will use it on you. What shampoo they are using in my hair. What watch. shampoo and, and which measures have they taken, due diligence have they taken in getting these products? That is, we are trying as, as an institution to make sure that we liaise with our counterparts in other agencies to seize containers that are coming in in the country. So this one you seized from where? This we seized from, uh, from a client who had just imported them in the country. So this was at the URA, so, customs. So information came in and then we got them. From customs. But, but we can't know how mm. many are out there on the market. What quantity did you get of this? Uh, we, have, uh, we have over 100 cartons of, of, of Dexay. 100 cartons, those are how many boxes? This carton has what, 20, 24, 12? The, no, the, these are very small. They are about, about 60 because so the, 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 the boxes usually are, are this big. The sizes are quite massive. And this, this product, um, the culprits, again, yes. you process them, are they in court, are they, how far is this case? This, is, this file is in court, this file is in court, 
of course, as, as, as we are learning with state, it, it's, it's a bit tricky because whenever we even get prosecutors and state attorneys, they need to appreciate this. The product. Yes, they, not the product itself. Mm. The law itself and then the opinions that are given by the different, by, by the, by the different agencies. Because with this, we have uh, a report from uh, UNBS. We have an MOU with them, so we get these reports. And what then is the report saying about the contents? The contents are, they are, they are not genuine contents. They are not safe for, 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 human, for use. human use, yes. They are not safe for That's human use. That's the report use. from UNBS. Yes. But now, <coughs> what, what, how you got this consignment? It is fake. Yes. What steps did you take to safeguard the consumers? who do not know, first of all, that even you've got this product, mm. who do not know that it's dangerous, they don't know about the UNBS report, who are continuing to go to a saloon today. Mm. How did you sensitize them? Or what, what is it that you can tell them now? We as a unit, as the enforcement unit, mm. we liaise with uh, our counterparts in police. We do sensitizations. We call them, sensitize them. So we know that even when a police station or investigators out there in the field get these. They, they get them. That's why earlier I said we call for files from them. No, they initiate meaning, them. Do you have like a radio program or TV program or anywhere where I can go and get updates on today uh, in, in URSB enforcement? This mm -hmm. is what we got. Watch out for this. Maybe no. you need that as our, well. Our, yes, I think we need that because now for us we go into the general bulletin of. Uh, of URSB as an institution, but the enforcement unit has not yet created that page. Uh, that is very good. Uh, you very need good. To pay for that, yes. Uh, advice. <laughs> you should. Because, I should. Because you're I doing should, a very really. good job. I should. And I think it is mm. right that we, the consumers, mm. first of all, get to know that you're doing a good job because we may not know what you're doing. Mm. And then also, if there is any important information about dangerous products, mm -hmm. you, you need to give it to us. Okay. That I can see. True. There is a, I don't know what this Ntunga is. Saze. Ntunga Saze. Ntunga Saze drink. is what now? It's a drink. It's, it's, it's Can locally. Can I open and please, pick out something? Please. So if I'm thirsty now, I can drink this? Is this safe? No, it is not safe. It's a, it's a counter. Actually, this case was finalized. What is this? Because you're seeing even the residue down. Show the camera what, what uh, this You're is. seeing the residue down? Oh, yes. you're, you're seeing them. This is a There's drink. Residue. That yes, that was it's on a the health market. Drink? Uh, it's but it has something down. It's is an alcoholic drink. That is why it's a fake. You can it see is an the, alcoholic drink. Yes, Ntunga Sazi drink. Yes, it's alcoholic. But just like you're seeing the the residues down. Alcoholic kombucha drink. Kombucha yes. Kombucha drink. Kombucha yes. But this drink has a, a UNBS. It has a UNBS. A it is true. They tr they try as much as possible. Now these stickers uh -huh. were gotten at the premises. They do it themselves. They have machines that have this batch, uh, the batch number for for expiry. We we have them. Usually they are X bits that we take on. This one has a US, so meaning that a US USB number. Yes. 2037. Is that the same number on your drink? 2037, yes. So uh, the number is supposed to be the, the same? The, the sticker is 2037. Two so, so, but now, if the UNBS, you call this what? Um, it has it's a it's technical name. It's, it's, it's a mark. It's a know. standard mark. Yes. A standard mark or certification. Mm. If a counterfeiter can get it, and put it on a product. So me, when I am buying, I see the UNBS certification here, yes. and I'm confident I just drink. Mm. And then you are telling me that this is fake with a UNBS sticker. How do you explain that? Where no, are we? Where are we heading? Dropping the ball. <laughs> huh? We are putting in as much effort as we can, mm -hmm. because yes, then our numbers are very limited. I, I should say. Uh, the institution is trying to, to see to it that we get more numbers because we are based in Kampala and we traverse the whole country. Yet the numbers are less than 10. Which numbers for you? The numbers for enforcement of, of, oh, of, of these products, numbers. our numbers. But of course, we even call upon uh, 
the, the, the people who manufacture these, some of them do not know what to do. They how don't. How to protect themselves. How to protect themselves. They do not know that they can always come for redress at, at hours. But my concern is you have an MOU with UNBS. Yes, we do. What does the do. MOU say Our about MOU, that it UNBS? Has now, when, whenever we want uh, reports on quality assurance of these products, mm. it becomes easy for us to immediately get them. Because you get a, 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 this, and they're like, no. Yes, you'll get the stickers, because when we got these, they were being cut at the premises. And then wrapped The around. machines of the seals, they were all there. The ceiling, everything was there. Even production itself. The saucepans. The what is the content of this? The, it's made of what? Banana or what? what? What are the ingredients? This one being a fake, I can't say. But of course for them, they indicate that made it's water, Vichana. black tea, acidity regulator. And they put scoby. So, but, but what still, are the contents inside? The contents... When you check with UNBS. The contents, I can't say the contents because we've dealt with so many of these products. But one thing that you should know is they are not safe for human consumption. At so least the report is... stomach diseases and everything. The report People is very clear. They, they are, they are so not safe. Are we sure that this product is not on the market now? We have tried to get it off the shelves. I cannot speak with certainty. But of course we need input of all stakeholders in this. So this you got from where? Mubende? We Indiana. got this Mubende and then uh, Kabale. There's even a recently concluded file of Kabale and in Tungamo districts. So in there Central were three, and Western three, Uganda. There were three dist districts where we got this Mubende, Kabale and, uh, and in Tungamo. Have you checked Kampala WISEF? Kampala? Because Kampala we, is quite we, big. We, we have some of Kampala. Mm. We have some of Kampala, but Kampala is big. Usually clear and then some of them run... Some of them change location, but you try as much as possible to make sure that, th that you empty. And then what we also do, in case someone brings in a complaint, and then we are in the field and see these products, we do not wait for another complaint. We take it on as enforcement. But now there is a genuine product, of There is a genuine product, yes. Called with the same name. Same what name. What is the name? It is also called in Tunga yeah. as a drink. In Tunga as a drink. The same name. So, where is the genuine one sold? Supposing I want to take this. It's it in shops. Nice. Where? The it, in is the, it looks the same. It looks the same. It looks the same. But of course, now when you do not know the mark, it becomes very hard for you. This mark is the registered mark, but it's different from the original mark. In Tunga Sazi. So, yes. don't you think this is an example of a brand owner, the owner of the trademark, to come out? If there is a case mm -hmm. of reported theft or infringement mm -hmm. of their trademark, yes. also the brand should come out, not to leave it to URSB. They should come out and warn us mm -hmm. and say um, there is a product, batch number this, or packaging this, mm -hmm. selling these areas, which is fake. Please don't buy. Shouldn't we have such notices from the, the manufacturers it is to that, us? It is, that is very important. I think we should speak to our stakeholders, especially the URSB, to sensitize them and maybe have that docket of having these people come out. Uh, because we have had some people who have reformed, and we've spoken to them uh, at URSB. Sometimes we do a follow-up on some of these uh, people who have infringed. Some of them have, have, have turned, and some are now ambassadors. I think most of the time we have created ambassadors to please tell to people... To fight. Yes. We have done that in, in, with our community policing and sensitizations. We have done that. But it's not enough. We need everyone on board. And then maybe even government, we are working hand in hand to make sure that we put in more Yeah, more but energy. me I'm seeing now, mm. like for you, Brenda, mm. you are yes. from the anti counter Counterterrorism, yes. Yeah? This, because you're an expert in the uh, I'm biological. a bomb technician, yes, and a you CBRN are a bomb expert. Technician. Yes. So you are an expert in chemical and biological. Yes. This, this is, can, can, it looks like a bottle, but it's actually a lethal biological chemical weapon. This one. It's, it's a, a lethal it's device. It's a chemical, this. yes. They, are, they use chemicals. So, so from, from the security terrorism perspective, this is a biological or chemical weapon. This one. Because it can actually cause massive injury. Harm, and yes. harm. And um, even death. 
Yes. In, in terms of CBRN, that is a chemical which has been mutated, let me, let me call it in that language of, of, mm -hmm. of bone. Similar to this one? Yes, that is also a, that's also a fake. Eh? This it's is a, also a fake? It's also a fake. It's also locally made? It's locally made, yes. You so, said pineapple wine. Mm. You, you show the camera. It's, it's a pineapple wine. Mm. Huh? This one also you got from where? Product of Uganda. Product of Uganda, yes. Made in uh, this one, Mushaki, Kabale. We got this from Kabale, yes. We used to have banapo wine. It's still there? Pineapple wine. Banapo. Banapo wine. We used to have a the, drink. The, there are a number of... Uh, there are a number of these that he makes, because this is one of them. That's from that same company? Yes, that same company makes a number of them in Kabale. Actually, this one was concluded about two weeks ago. This one was they are su Yes, we, we are supposed to take this for destruction. We have over... We have over a hundred crates. This was got from where? From Kabale. This came from Kabale? Yes. The person was... Uh, Arrested. We arrested that person from Kavale. Yes. And convicted. And we got a conviction. I'm told we have to take a break. When we return, we are going to talk about the sentencing. The sentences for counterfeiters. Are they sufficient to help us fight this menace of counterfeits? We're back with the third and last segment of this discussion about counterfeits. We are with the head of the enforcement unit at the Uganda Registration Services Bureau, uh, Assistant Superintendent of Police, uh, Oinebie Brenda Basirika. Brenda, you are saying that you conclude that this case, yes. meaning the guy must be somewhere rotting in jail, and also this case. Yes. This one should also be rotting in jail. Yeah. Tell yeah. us about the punishment for counterfeits. Now, the well, using this as an example, mm, what the, were the punishments? The punishments for these counterfeits, uh, f for me, I should call them, uh, we have not appreciated them. They are, they are not so stringent, we should say. Because now what happens is uh, these people have options. They have options. Both of these suspects this one entered, in into, for how long? entered into a plea bargain. This was plea bargain? Yes, both of them, plea bargain. And what happened? Plea bargain, now they were fined, and then they are supposed to pay costs to court, and costs to... For, so for, it was for just the, a fine? They were fined, yes, because they did not waste court's time. That takes us now to the law. Uh, so what was the fine? Do you remember the fine? The fine, uh, the fine to court was, I think... 960,000 only. This one was 960,000. 960,000, yes. But the consignment we had, you arrested was... We had, about, we had about two, two counts. Uh, the destruction costs stretched to about 3 million only. And what was the value of the consignment? That's how we calculate now the destruction. With the destruction, that is how they... they, they, they so it's a percentage? It's a, yes, it's about the quantity. The quantity, they weigh it with the quantity, so you have to get the quantity of what you have recovered, and then that is computed to know how much is supposed to be fined for that product. And this guy? This one, we have uh, about, about 150 uh, crates that we recovered. What was the fine? Was it a fine also? Yes, it was also a fine. Most of these have learned that they can enter into a, a plea bargain, though we are considering custodial. And they pay fine. So they pay fine, yes. But they are custodial laws. I know for a fact that counterfeiting a trademark can land you in jail for two years at least. Yes. So why doesn't URSB push for these sentences, custodial sentences? We have extensively discussed about them because we have in-house prosecutors yeah. and uh, the laws have not been uh, amended to suit. So usually these are prayers. No, but there's a law which says you can go, go to jail. Yes, because whenever they, they say we have fined you, a fine of 920 or 2 million and destruction costs of mm. 5 and then or jail of 2 years so the guy chooses they choose and pay the, and pay the money so so don't you think it is now the law is actually the law against counterfeits mm. is actually enabling counterfeiters to promote counterfeiting because if somebody has been counterfeiting for 3 years made 100 million from this product yes and then you catch him with uh, 100 cartons, mm -hmm. and he pays a, a fine of 900,000. Mm -hmm. 
it is a profitable business. The okay. risk is so small. It's like a surcharge he's paying. It's, it's not punitive enough. It's not punitive enough. That is why uh, some of, of the complainants opt to go civil after getting these convictions because it is this, 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 these cases, these offenses, you can always go criminal and then go civil. civil. But even As civil, the law transforms to, to but cater. But even civil, you mm -hmm. can only get damages for the business loss. You are actually not punishing yes. the other culprit, who we have said mm -hmm. is supplying dangerous products Product, that yes. could be harming. They are. They are not, not could be, but they are harming our people. They are harming people. They are. And, and tell me, so don't you face some challenges? with complainants. We have faced it here. Mm -hmm. A complainant brings a, a matter and uh, as you're prosecuting the, the case, they mm -hmm. go into negotiations with the culprit. They negotiate and the, the complainant is paid some money and they frustrate the case. Do you face such cases? There are so many. We have so many. These uh, offenses being uh, individual rights, these are so many. We have so many stalled files. From way back when the unit started in 2017, there are many. Because what happens is you proceed with a case, do investigations, move about and then compile a very good case file. And the complainant withdraws or they do not appear say, as a witness. And the case collapses. Or they do an agreement and they're like, no, for us we entered an agreement and we are done. But Afanda, you know it's an offense for you to frustrate the prosecution of uh, a criminal offense. That you are not free. True. So, so I think people need to be sensitized mm. because a, a criminal case, whereas it may involve private rights, actually is brought in the name of the state. Yes. That's why criminal cases are Uganda versus right. so and so. It is not Fred versus so and so. Mm. So, so the state has an ownership and a stake in the prosecution mm. of criminal offenses because they affect the safety and security of the wider, of the wider community. So, if, yes. if criminal cases get compromised at individual level, then the security and safety and well-being of society will be affected. Is also affected. Don't you agree? I agree. I entirely I agree. But yes, we have that challenge of, of people doing that. The next time you call them, they do not come up. A file is ready. You have the suspect and now it's the complainant coming saying, no, for us we agreed. And then courts have also not uh, picked up with it because whenever these agreements go to court. The court also receives them. They receive them and they are okay. They have agreed and do not repeat this. And that is it. But can you imagine a situation where there is a murder and you, <coughs> the complainant and the victim enter into an agreement and say we've sorted this thing and you take it to the court and the murder charge is dropped. Because that is, the, in effect, what, what is happening. I think yes. it's not right that is, yes. for the courts to, 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 to condone this criminal activity. That criminal activity. Which we are You're saying could right. be responsible for the rising cancer cases and all these things. And indeed they are responsible. Uh, I think um, for me, in my, in my thinking, since I have uh, been in the area and, and that's where I am with operations, following up and then seeing how these things are done and how they are made. Uh, we have had interactions with court. We have had interactions with state about these issues. And we are continuing to, to talk to I them. I think we need to work together to, to work sensitize to, to, yes. the justice law and other sector to take this as a crime of a serious nature. Mm -hmm. It's not a question of people signing agreements and saying I have been paid. Mm -hmm. It's not about payment. It's not about your profit. Mm -hmm. I think it's about the general public health and economic health economic uh, of health the country. Yes. As we talk about JIC, mm -hmm. I would like you to talk about JIC in respect of uh, since a lot of these cases people are just fined. Do you have um, situations where you arrest mm. Mr. A in January, okay. he pays a fine in, in, in March. You arrest him again in May, he pays a fine in August. He, do you have repeat offenders, as you explain where you got that jig from? Yes, we have repeated offenders. There who are do many. it again and again? Yes, who do it again and again. Actually, sometimes even before you conclude, now like this jig, mm -hmm. this mark here, it's quite different. From the genuine one? If, if you would even bring this, these are all fake. But when you look what at it, even, 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 the, the, even the letters, mm. these are two different bottles. So there's a problem but with the even, even themselves, they, they, they counterfeit, they are different. 
So what is different? The jig, this the, is not how the jig is. The jig, yes. This is not how the jig is. This is not the mark of jig. So even the the covering, they are tempered with, they are not sealed. The they, genuine one is properly sealed. They are not sealed, yes, it's not properly sealed. They uh -huh. don't have marks. The dates are not there, it's even pouring. So this it's is pouring yes, and it's supposed it's, to be sealed. It's supposed to be sealed, as you can see. So this is what we usually get from the field. And then when you go, sometimes you even get empty bottles. This, this was pouring. That one pours. Mm. Can you imagine? It is pouring, but, but they thing. have sealed, yes. They have sealed. So meaning it's open? It, it, is, uh, it is open. So it's is open. this a product that you got from a repeat offender? Or this was the first time? Uh, it was the first time that we got this particular one, but repeated offenders are there. Because some file, files are ongoing, and when you go back, you get the same people. So somebody so will have a file in Buganda Road Court? Yes. Counterfeiting ongoing. powder? When then you go Mubende, back, you find the them. Counterfeiting jig, and it's okay. On Thursday, we had two f case files, which were concluded of... Uh, there's a product where, which we concluded we are just supposed to do destruction. That th they, we got the sentencing on, on Thursday, Thursday last week. The same suspect appeared as a co-accused in the first file and in the second file. So counterfeiters are having a field day. You charge me here for uh, an energy drink, a supplement here, soap here, a detergent there, and it's okay. And it the courts it is are not happening. taking this into account. It is happening. Is this information shared between the courts? Do you as prosecution go and say, uh, my lord or your worship, this person is also on a, on a charge in Mubende, therefore don't give him bail because he's a repeat offender. He's making this a business yes. and a joke actually. Yes. Our prosecutors have done that. They are at least people that we have on remand so that we do not take them back because they even disappear. Now the costs of looking for suspects is also very they high. disappear from where? From, from, I got you from Movenda and you disappear. I look for you if you're out on bond and you're never found. So we have prayed for that. Some of them, yes, are on remand so that they just appear and then these sentences are But you're are, speaking are, are, about are serious weaknesses in the justice system. How are we going to fight counterface if we take so much time and resources mm. to apprehend the culprit yes. and give the institution supposed to... To, to hold them and the person runs away. These, these are rights that, that, that uh, uh, are given to the people by, by the constitution the and, right the, and the governing laws. Uh, no, I'm no. talking about escaping. I'm seeing an institutional weakness. The, the, the escape of, of these people is not because they have their own remand, no. The ones that usually disappear are the ones who are on bond or bail. So your message to the judiciary is that can we have more stringent bail conditions for counterfeiters yes because they are disappearing and you they do and then spending good money chasing we keep chasing them actually we have gotten stuck at some of our files we would have so many convictions by now but they reduce because even the suspects are hard and of, of course i should be very frank if we could even remove the political arm from this what do you mean and have uh, Politics also plays something. Because when things come in, and then these are the same people who are making these laws, and then sometimes when you get them, they are, uh, a politician will also come to say, this is my person, and then you never get he them again. He comes citing which law? Maybe he has a new law, which you are not aware of. No. He comes reading <laughs> the real say. law and says, well, this is my person. Uh, no, one, of course, they base on, uh, on, on the issues of the right as a right by the constitution, which is very true. A right to do what? But, but a to right counterfeit, to, there's no such right. To bond, to, to bail, and then they, they, they get out. And then it's a strong surety. When that strong surety comes, you're like, okay, getting them is, is quite hard for us. I think that is Connected also the other, the so, other so issue that we are and, getting. And connections and all this is actually they, they promoting. Sub, I should say it sabotages most of my case files also. It does. Politics sabotages. Yes, it does also. But we are trying, we are doing our best to make sure that we do. But don't we, you also think do our work. the brand owners, because mm. this was an empty, yes. which was thrown away. Mm. And a faker got it and filled in rubbish here and yes. came to sell to you. Mm. Don't you think the disposal policy of these empties also leaves a lot to be desired? 
shouldn't the brand or we the consumers mm -hmm. ensure that either this is destroyed or there is a return policy to the manufacturer for this bottle not to be available to the counterfeiter for refilling? That's a very good suggestion. But of course, with our masses and then the consumers, the final consumers, uh, that could be a regulation maybe under municipality or city management on waste disposal. Or even environment, because this is plastic. Mm, that is they true. Are, this, this plastic is not biodegradable. So it is going into the environment, affecting the fertility of the soil, go, go, going into our water sources and the Zavia. So it is affecting the whole ecosystem yes. of because our sustainability. The last so of these that mm. we got, we have these collection centers where people go for plastics. I don't know if you've seen them. You collect uh, plastic bags, and then plastic bottles, and they are sold. Now, we have some very many sacks that we recovered of Vim. Yeah, let's talk about empties. the Vim. Vim mm. empties that we recovered. There were so many. This I was think you can empty. see this one is it's a dirty and it, it was used. So something you got that this was. From where? We got this from Kafumbe Mukasa. Downtown. Downtown, yes. And why is this one fake? This is fake because. The seal here, you can even see pen on it. Sure, sure. They it's not the way it, it is just they, fixed. They fix it there, yes. It's, it's not you can how. See it's not even even. Uh -huh. So they usually do this and then cut. You're seeing the cuttings. The black with the pen, so that's what they usually do. And some don't even have a this, seal. You can see it's tempered with. They all don't. They all don't. But these ones don't have a seal. Yes, some that's, of them. Now that's how, that's how it's sold. So our population. And it's supposed to have a seal. It is supposed to have a seal. Now, even the consuming population, if you find this in a shop, must you take it? Because it is a bit... But the, the, the brand has at, not at, told at, us. At a lower they price? They only advertise on the TV, Vim, Kills, Jams. There is no advert that tells us that it must have this, must have this, must have this. We don't know. Mm. We are ignorant. That is, that is the problem. Mm. So I think URSB needs to sensitize and cultivate these brands. Mm to come out more and support your good work, to ensure that they work hand in hand with you. Because for you, you're just an enforcer, mm. you're a regulator. Yes. But you're not the owner of this trademark. Mm -mm. You need the owner of the trademark to come out and give more information. Probably you can, as a condition for the trademark license, mm. you put one of the conditions should be that you must sensitize, um, the public give consumer education as a condition for holding this trademark license. Don't you think that's a good idea? Consumer yes. education is important because protection of IP cannot be done by URSB alone, cannot be done by the brand alone. It needs to be done with all stakeholders, including the consumers. The so consumers. consumer education as a condition for licensing of trademarks. Uh, as an enforcer, I wouldn't say that I know the the nitty gritties of what they follow to, to, to award this. But you think it sounds good? It's it, it, would, it, it would be a very good idea, mm -hmm. though I do not know the financial implications that are attached to mm -hmm. them. But as government, I believe as government, if, if government steps up and we work together because they are doing this, uh, for me, I would believe if when we are enforcing this and we get these as offenders, we should... We should not streamline and then proceed with it as, as, as an individual right when it becomes an offense. It becomes of a, a, an individual right, but of a public nature. Yes. Because it affects many people. Yes. We need to conclude, but I, I saw a report by Bank of Uganda mm. saying that less than or 1% of Uganda's working population mm. earns a million shillings. Yes. The rest and below. Mm -hmm. So you have more than 20 million Ugandan workers earning less than a million shillings. Mm -hmm. And here on this platform, we have several drivers of counterfeiting, yes. which includes differentiation, convenience, <coughs> affordability. Mm -hmm. To what extent do you think, from your work, mm -hmm. is affordability a big driver for counterfeiting? Or is it the biggest? Affordability Money. is the biggest. It's the biggest because uh, whenever we get these products, they are at a much <coughs> cheaper price than the original product itself. Do the culprits tell you that, I'm sorry, I got this because it was cheaper, because yes. I couldn't afford? Yes, some of them. 
Some of them who are willing to disclose say that, though some relate it to differentiation. But majority of them, it's about the pricing. The prices of these counterfeits are cheaper. So affordability <coughs> is a big factor. Yes, in the field where I am, affordability is a very... So the, 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 the plan to increase household incomes will actually go a long way in fighting counterfeits. This government it, it, wants to say, let's increase mm. income of, of, of the people. That, in a way, will help to push back on counterfeits because people will afford quality now. It can. It is possible. The affordability of quality, yes. But because they want it and it's there, <coughs> they do not look at the repercussions of what this counterfeits. They don't know the concealed dangers. Yes, they do not know. There's also a, a sensitive issue. We are um, suffering high prices, commodity prices. Mm. So two questions there. How is the high prices complicating the fight against counterfeits? And have you also encountered any fake food in, in your operations? Yes, we had foodstuffs. What food, food, food which, which, which kind of food, uh, food, food, food we eat. Mm. Any food that you, you found, any maybe grain or yes, yes. Uh, recently, we destroyed 360 bags of posho. 360 and bags I already of have in stock 293 bags of posho. What was fake about them and where were they from? The max. And then even the, man, the, the process of manufacturing them, what where we, go, we got them from, was not genuine. One, the marks were wrong. They faked a, a mark, and, and then to look like, but it wasn't. And even the, the, the company that was manufacturing, it wasn't registered. And there it what was. What was wrong with the quality the, of the The quality of the portion. We did not go deep into the quality, still investigating. but still, the mark itself, because for, for these ones we have already gotten convictions. With this way, the convictions are there because the destruction of this second batch should be next week. We are finalizing it next week because the court orders are out. So, how is the high prices we are suffering now mm -hmm. complicating? Are we consuming more counterfeits because of high prices? Are we consuming less? How is it playing? along with the counterfeit issue, this big problem you're talking about. Whenever people do not have money, they opt for cheaper items. So higher prices are cause pushing us to more counterfeits? They are, yes, they are pushing us there. They are pushing us there. Because when someone says, how much is this? And you're like, no, this is 10,000. And someone is advertising it at 8,000. Then they usually go for the one for eight. So it usually gets done very fast. And how these complainants are coming in is I'm not selling anymore. That's how they notice that something is not right. After investigating, why aren't you selling? Someone else is selling this product at a cheaper price. They are not licensed. They are not paying any taxes. They are not renting anywhere. So production is massive. The price is cheaper. And people are buying them because they don't have the money. Brenda, we need to stop here, but we'll give you a chance on your own behalf and on behalf of URSB and the Uganda police. What is your message to Ugandans about counterfeits? Okay. Thank you. Uh, first, I should uh, thank URSB as an institution for the work they are putting in, the measures that they have taken to make sure that we fight the vice. Uh, police itself has also fully supported us, especially in analysis with the government institutions that are available. Uh, thank you for that work, and it is assisting us to, to process and initiate our case files with ease. But I should also call upon the people out there who are buying these items, who are ordering for them, because most of them are even exports, come in and some are local products, to think of the consequences of these counterfeits and then desist from such acts so that we can have a healthy Uganda health environment, and productivity. Because when we are healthy, I'm seeing pro I see productivity in the country, considering that most of us are youth. And, and we're generally just starting the, our journey. Some people say cheap is expensive. How can you elaborate on that? The consequences Using of counterfeit. The consequences of <laughs> cheap, the consequences of the cancers that you could get from these, or the, or the curry powder, make it very expensive. For you to go to Mulago and undergo chemotherapy for the longest, of which you may and not maybe know. maybe lose your life. 
yes, you may not know if you'll survive or lose your life. So it's important that we guard ourselves. It's important that we caution ourselves not to go for these products. That way we shall reduce on the people who are making them. Because if I go out there and I know it's cheap and I do not buy it and buy a genuine product, that means I'm failing the person who is producing it and therefore better growth, that is better true. economy. We would like on behalf of your employer, the uh, leadership at uh, Uganda Registration Service Bureau, would like to uh, thank you for the <coughs> partnership uh, and good working relationship we have. Uh, having sent uh, a very able and competent officer to explain. I'm sure you have benefited a lot uh, from the expose and discussion here. Uh, she had actually a truckload of things to bring, but we didn't have room. Uh, this just goes to show the extent of the problem that we have. For those who think we don't have a problem, it's actually here. It is with us. It's not tomorrow. It is today that we have the problem, and it's today that we need to fight uh, this scourge of counterfeits. Uh, for those who are just joining us, this is the only show that talks about counterfeits. And you can tune in every Friday evening. We have a special guest to discuss uh, and give you information because we believe an informed consumer uh, is an empowered consumer. I would like to sign off by asking you, don't be fake, buy and sell genuine.